Hi, today we will talk about how we can create a VM using VMware Workstation Pro. Uh, in this uh, time, we will be using the VMware Workstation 16. First, you're going to click on File and you're going to create a new uh, virtual machine by clicking New Virtual Machine. There's two options presented. Uh, one is the typical uh, installation or the custom installation. Today, I will show you how you can do a custom installation. Select custom, click next. Keep it in default. If you are in VMware uh, Workstation 16, um, you can keep it at uh, 16. However, we are you are thinking about migrating this into a different VMware platform or other platform. Uh, there are other options uh, such as EX, uh, ESXi 7.0. Uh, for now, we'll keep it at VMware 16. The only time you would change this is that if you are planning to move uh, this particular VM to a different uh, platform. Click next. You will get an option to include the ISO file or you could uh, install the ISO file later. In this demonstration, we will go with I will install the operating system later. However, if you would like to get the ISO file um, embedded already, into the CD drive, you can actually put install this image file and then browse and find your image file and then install it from there. Either or would be fine. Uh, one of the advantage of uh, using I will install operating system later is that you can create this VMware and then you can decide later what kind of ISO file you're going to be you will be using, as long as it is the same uh, or similar operating system, either Linux or Windows. So I will select, I will install the operating system later. Click next. I'm going to install a Windows based machine. So I will select Windows and I'll be installing Windows Server in this particular one. Uh, it is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to select Windows Server. But however, if you want to select uh, anything else, uh, there's a list of items you can pick for, pick for example, Windows 10 and you're going to click next. It will ask you what the virtual machine should be named. Uh, so it's arbitrary. Um, I typically put something like win server 2019, uh, but you can put whatever you like. Uh, then uh, the location which the virtual files should be stored. This is where the virtual uh, machine will be uh, saved by the VMware. Uh, you can put it into a secondary drive uh, or to a folder. In my case, I just put it into a folder. Um, it is up to you. Um, and then um, obviously you can change the you know default uh, loca file locations here as well. So that every single time this wizard pops up, it will automatically point to that directory. Click next. Uh, they will give you the option of BIOS or UEFI. I will, I usually keep it in UEFI, especially for Windows, uh, but uh, you have the option to select something else, like uh, BIOS if you like. I don't put secure boot uh, for my experimental VMs, but uh, you can obviously select that one as well. And then it's gonna ask how many processors you would like to allocate. So depending on your machine, uh, you can allocate, um, you know, resources to a VM but the rule of thumb is if you have for example 64 gigabyte of ram you should not be allocating uh, ram all the way to 64. instead you should be allocating like uh, i would say at least 5 to 10 gigabyte less than what the maximum allocated uh, maximum uh, memory you have same with the cpu cores the reason for that is if you allocate too many processors and too much memory uh, into a VM, it could crash your computer. The VM will be sluggish. It's not going to go any faster. It, uh, it will be sluggish and you, uh, you could freeze the entire VMware workstation. So I will keep it as default unless you're going to change it later. You can change it later. I will click next. Now, uh, yeah, I discussed memory a little bit earlier. So I have six, 64 gigabyte of RAM, but I would never put it to 64 gigabyte of RAM. Not, there's no, it will crash your VM. 
So instead, uh, I'm going to pick 8 gigabyte of RAM. Again, you can tweak this later as well. Uh, you have the option to select different type uh, variations of RAM, or, or you could manually enter how much RAM you would like. So if you if I want just 6,000 megabyte, you can just put 6,000. Yeah, we'll just go with 6,000 uh, megabyte. That which is 6 gigabyte. Uh, or you can obviously click on 8 for like presets. So uh, let's see if we go with 6,000 gigabyte and go next. In terms of network connection, if this is your first VM, I would recommend stay is um, you know sticking with the NAT. Uh, what NAT is basically like pretty much it's going to go and obtain an IP address from your router to go outside for this VM. So I would keep it as NAT. Uh, I will explain the differences between NAT, uh, bridge, uh, host only um, networks uh, in a later video. Uh, but for now, just keep it in NAT. Click next. And in terms of controller, just leave it as uh, recommended, unless uh, you want to go something do something specific. Uh, always pick NVMe when it is the option available for you. Uh, especially if you have a solid state hard drive, I would recommend just stick with the MD, N, NVMe. And uh, select create a new virtual desk. And the allocated drive, I would keep it in as, you know, um, uh, default, which is 60 gigabyte. Um, and then one of the things that I would not recommend doing it is allocate all disk space now. The reason for that is, this 60 gigabyte basically means that the VMware go up to 60 gigabyte for this virtual machine. But at the start of this virtual machine, the VMware will not allocate the 60 gigabyte from your hard drive. So you don't need to allocate entire 60 gigabyte. Um, so the only uh, only advantage probably you have by allocating it, it will probably increase maybe performance of your VM, but it's very slightly. Uh, same with uh, split virtual disk into multiple files versus uh, virtual disk uh, as a single file. Splitting virtual disk into multiple multiple files, which is the default settings, uh, will increase the performance of your uh, VM. But however, I found uh, if you want to move things around, it's pretty e you know better. It's pretty easier if you have the virtual disk as a single file, and also. In terms of performance increase by splitting into multiple files is very negligible in my opinion. I have been using VMware Workstation for over a year right now and I have not seen a big significant increase in performance by either putting into a virtual single file versus the multiple file. So I will always go with the single file. It would, be, it would make it easier for you to move things around. If you click next, you can name the uh, your hard drive i will just leave it blank uh, so i will leave it as default this would be the virtual machine's name i'm just going to leave it there again you can select where this uh, file will be created and then you can go next and it will give you uh, um, all the information that you have entered even in here you have the option to change all the selections that you made uh, before you finish but you can obviously can change it even after you create this uh, VM. Finally, uh, click finish. And once it is done, it will give you a VMware uh, workstation machine up here. And you can change all the settings we went through by going into edit virtual machine settings and changing out configurations. Uh, the only thing that uh, is not uh, available in this, uh, most of these options is um, pretty much nothing. Actually, it's, uh, everything is available. Um, so you can change all the options in here. Um, well, one thing I want to mention is that once you select the operating system you're going to go with, uh, and you select the ISO file and the virtual machine is running, uh, you can increase uh, the um, uh, the the RAM very easily, but decreasing it may be a little bit um, 
you know, cumbersome. You can do it, but you shut down the machine and decrease the, uh, the memory and then reboot it, but sometimes it could create uh, certain uh, registry key issues and stuff like that. I've seen some VMs crashes, especially Windows machines, just because of you had eight gigabyte of RAM and drop it to four gigabyte. Um, that's pretty much it. And on my next video, I will show you how to install a operating system uh, using this VM. Thank you. And also, I would like to point out, uh, if you'd like to learn more about this, uh, there's, it's available on my website uh, so that you don't have to go through the video. You can just go follow up on this uh, article. Uh, I will leave a link below. Uh, and that's uh, everything and have a nice day.